Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. And we were hoping to get Larry online, but I think he maybe got bounced out. So I'm going to try and call him if I can. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes, I think. Having a lot of trouble. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Hey, Stuart. I was blocked. I I like to never got in. Yeah, I figured that's what was going on. A lot of people are being blocked. We're getting calls from people that say they can't. Listen, there's no audio, or they can't uh, tune in. Uh, I, th- I think we're being, uh, how do we say, hacked, uh, blocked, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this deal here seems to be escalating. From what I can read, uh, the war definitely is a go. It's just a question of when they're going to uh, launch, and as I understand it, uh, correct me here too, uh, that Russia has moved most of their assets totally out of the way, and the word from the inside appears to be that they are not going to uh, do anything unless their people are attacked, which seems to be a walk back from all of the rhetoric, and it seems like Trump also is kind of walking back from the brink. Do you suppose they're going to back off and cooler heads will actually prevail in this thing? What's your take? Well, well, Stuart, that possibly would be what's going on right now. You know, I, I told you that a lot of people were praying that this didn't come off as it appeared to be happening, and and possibly a little soon, sooner than than it should, maybe. But uh, mm-hmm. what's interesting in the last 24 hours or since we had a show, uh, Netanyahu has been on the phone with Putin, uh, giving concerns about Iran, Iran and Iranian military and forces in Syria. And uh, mm-hmm. apparently Netanyahu and Putin have come to some type of an agreement. We don't know what it is. But uh, Israel is still on full alert and uh, wondering if they're going to be attacked at any time. However, uh, I did see General Jack Keane earlier on Fox, and he was saying that there, this appears to be a strange pause. Uh, it's really not understandable. Uh, everyone thought the missiles would already have gone, but I've noted that the news uh, people, not, not mainstream, I don't even watch them, they're a loser, But, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, like One America News or Fox News or some of those that really do try to find out a little bit, uh, they were saying that uh, there might be some problems with actually who initiated this chemical gas attack. And uh, One America News said a while ago that uh, Russia had sent Russian forces into Duma and was probing into that. And, uh, you know, it is possible it's a false flag. I mean, I know everybody says Assad did it, but it would be the dumbest thing, in, you know, in, in, I guess, the history of mankind for him to do it when, you know, uh, we announced we were leaving Syria. Yeah, so, I, I, I uh, just can't. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just, go ahead. It, yeah, well, I was just going to say the wording at the moment is a strange pause, and they had uh, Mattis on just a little while ago on One American News, and he was saying that uh, – that uh, this is still being examined and, and details are on the table and uh, nothing yet. So there is, this is a strange pause. That's the only word I've got, the same word they're using. Well, it does seem that when Trump stated that he was going to pull his troops out of Syria, Putin more or less indicated the same thing. Suddenly then we have this chemical attack, which is obviously not Assad, he, that that's the most ridiculous thing that he could do. He wouldn't do it. He's not that stupid. So uh, probably Deep State did it. That'd be my guess. That's, the Bible indicates that our CIA, our NSA are guilty of atrocious things. And um, 
It's simply called Those Who Stir Up Strife and Trouble. And uh, we're going to get it on account of those deep state people. And uh, that would be my guess. However, deep state wants this war. But from the tweets that Trump did, it's almost like he was trying to back off the rhetoric that he had been using. And he had said before, well, I'm not going to tell anybody what I'm going to do, where I'm going to strike, or how I'm going to do it. And yet we know perfectly well he's notified just about everybody what he's going to do. Even the Syrians from an insider claim that uh, they are moving all of their military assets away from the targets, uh, command and control. This is what I got from an insider, and uh, or he's claimed to be an insider. He was on um, Israeli news. Uh Assad has moved his forces outside of the known targets. Russia will not get involved unless troops are hit, which is contradictory to the fact that they were going to shoot down everything that came in and go after the, you know, the boats that did it. So Russia will not get involved. Uh, command and control air bases, missile sites, uh, the, the palace in Damascus, all the leaders, according to this person, said that they had already gone to Iran. Iran said it will not get involved. War on Thursday or Friday, or that's when they're going to launch their attack, and it will begin, and nobody knows yet whether it's the Isaiah 17 fulfillment or not. If Damascus is utterly destroyed, uh, then I guess we could, and, it's, and it takes place overnight. And that was another caveat that they said, that if this was a, a longer-term war, not just one night, or two, if it goes beyond, I think they said two, then that broadens out the possibility of direct conflict with Moscow. But that's all I have on it, that uh, this is... Uh, like you said, a very strange pause, and it seems like both leaders are backing off a little bit. Putin's backing off, and Trump is backing off. And maybe uh, Trump is trying to stop deep state from launching uh, an all-out war, because they definitely want their that war with Russia. What do you think? I mean, I... I it seems very, very strange, and the tweets of Trump appear to be a back-off. He's more or less saying, look, we can help Russia. What is all this? It's the fault of the Democrats and the Russian collusion, which is a total lie. So he's trying to put this on the, onto the, uh, I guess, deep state, which is also the Democrats. For the most part, not that we yeah. don't have a lot of Republican leaders involved in it as well. What do you think? Well, I think uh, it's a shame the American people can't wake up and before they spill their blood and realize who is doing this and put a stop to it. But, you know, I think you said prophecy basically indicates that they're not going to get up. They're not ever going to get up. And uh, we're in trouble. And it appears, to, I have to say, in the, the day we're talking about this, that uh, Trump and Putin appear to be the only sane people in the room, actually. Uh, two indicators that we're in this strange pause, as they're calling it, out of, uh, well, from uh, General Jack Keane and, and Mattis and others. Um, you know, there appears a, a step back is going on in the U.S. side, not deep state now. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. oh, they're still calling for their war. And... Uh, but uh, Putin, if, if you have noticed, uh, I, I posted today, he had someone in the foreign ministry in Russia uh, giving some statements, and he had someone in uh, an envoy in Lebanon giving a statement. And instead of Putin warning, this was other people talking. And so that appears to me a, to be a step back a little bit. Now, you know, of course, I may say that before we wake up in the morning, <laughs> something's <laughs> happened. But uh, with that, with Trump and Putin appearing to pause this thing a little bit and uh, the Russians moving into Duma, where, the, where this all started, uh, 
And at the same time with uh, Netanyahu and Putin talking about Iran, of course, but with them talking, something is changing or appears to be changing. Now, whether it will stall this, uh, because maybe it wasn't quite time for Isaiah 17 or Ezekiel 38, 39 or Psalm mm-hmm. 83, or any, you know, any of these wars, including the you know Daniel 8 war that you talked about, I don't know. I don't have enough data to really prove either way, but something, I just have to say again, there's a strange pause, and people need to be aware of that, but uh, don't let your caution down, because you've got a deep state in this country that's dead set against what the American people want. Yeah, the timing of this war is obviously in the Lord's hands, and it's not going to go on. Uh, you know, even when Bush and Cheney were in power, Cheney wanted to hit, I um, can't remember what it was he wanted to go after, Syria maybe, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, a lady in New England had been told by the Lord that that uh, no matter what Cheney tried to do, it was going to be frustrated. And it wasn't going to happen because the Lord didn't want it to happen at that point in time. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. She issued that, I think, early in the spring or late winter. And all during the summer, Cheney tried and tried and tried again. And everything he tried to do was frustrated. So this is really up to the Lord's timing. And, of course, prayer from the saints can also block these kind of things from happening. There is a fellow from uh, Israel, he's called Moshe, and he's a Levite. And the last thing he had to say was that Russian warships are now on the prowl in the Mediterranean Sea. Eleven, an interesting number, he says. <laughs> uh. So, you know, you've got, you've got this 9-11 or 11 showing up all the time. Uh, then from the UK comes another headline: moves UK moves submarines next to Syria. Strikes may begin as soon as Thursday. So it doesn't sound to me like the strike is off. It's just that they're warning everybody to get out of the way, which Trump said he wasn't going to do. So this has got to do with the threats from Putin, and who knows who else, that if you attack us, we will come after you. And that would be a direct war. That would be a war between the USA and the Soviets. And uh, that would not be a good war, because that could accelerate very, very rapidly. This Moshe also mentioned, by the way, of uh, trouble between Pakistan and India. And we've mentioned before that there I, there was a prophecy, and I can't remember where I read it. I wish I could find it. It was very, very clear that World War III would actually start between India and Pakistan. It would just expand from there, and it would just people would be lobbing their missiles wider and wider and wider. It would take in the United States finally, and then it would take in Japan, and Japan would be destroyed. And then the kings of the east would move on the Middle East, etc., etc., etc. But uh, back to uh, the UK, it says shortly after Theresa May declared that she could act in Syria without approval from Parliament, Telegraph is reporting that the Prime Minister has ordered UK submarines to travel within striking range of Syria and adds that strikes could begin as early as Thursday which is when May will call an emergency cabinet meeting over Syria. With the U.S. Truman Carrier Group still a month away, I guess they're claiming, the coalition will have to rely on U.K. and French ships. U.S. air support is likely also to be involved, suggesting that any attack on Syria may be based on a joint U.K.-French naval operation with U.S. air support. So you had mentioned you thought maybe this was going to uh, possibly move to a naval battle. Uh, you, do you still think that maybe is likely? Well, we don't know. Uh, some of the intelligence seemed to indicate that the Russian fleet that went out in the Mediterranean were going to put themselves between Syria 
and the uh, U.S. and and I guess some NATO uh, ships, and that mm-hmm. could develop. A, you know, if they begin to try to shoot down the missiles that the U.S. is firing, you know, don't take but one mishap, Stuart. I mean, yep. you know, all they got to do is hit one NATO ship, and all we got to do is hit one Russian ship, and I guess it'll be on. But uh, this is very tedious, the way this is. Matter of fact, Nigel Farage, you know, he's from the U.K., yes. and he actually gave a rant this evening uh, on Tucker Carlson's show, and he said this whole war is drummed up by by the deep state in Washington, D.C., and the mainstream media. He said and, yes. and those are directed pretty much by Obama and Soros and the Clintons. He said, if you want to know where it's coming from, take a look at those folks. Yeah, yeah, they ought to be hanging uh, Soros from a high tree, his boy from a high tree, Hillary from a high tree, Billy from a high tree. Uh, And we got, uh, actually, if you probably were going after everybody in Congress and whatnot uh, that is committing actually sedition at the very least and treason at at the most, you probably have a lot of bodies hanging from lampposts, <laughs> but they don't have to worry about that. That's never going to happen. I don't think, in fact, I don't think anybody's ever going to get arrested on any of this stuff that, that they're finding out. Uh, I just don't think so. But getting back to Trump and his tweets, it, this is, seems odd. Trump tells Putin, get ready, Russia. Missiles are coming. At Syria, nice, new, and smart. Russia to Trump. Are smart missiles an attempt to destroy the lack of evidence of fake chem attack? (laughs) Well, maybe that was what happened. Maybe Trump took it from uh, Putin. You better better check this stuff out. You're going to start World War III over a fake chemical attack? So maybe Trump has become wise to the fact that he's been duped. I mean, it's a possibility. And if that were true and they proved it, would they not call off this whole thing at this point? Well, the interesting thing is that I've kind of been watching the last day or so is I've watched uh, a greater caution come in to Trump and, and his the group of people around him because of the uh, onset of John Bolton entering the picture. And uh, John Bolton, if you've noticed, has not been out going and speaking anywhere like Tiller, uh, I mean like uh, Matt McMaster did. John Bolton yep. has been quiet. And there are reports that John Bolton is also causing the exodus now, an exodus of Obama people out of the White House. So you've got all these multiple things occurring at the very same time and crisis upon crisis upon crisis, and we're worried about in America about Stormy Daniels and a consensual affair possibly with Donald Trump years ago before he ever ran for election. That's what we're worried about. That's why we we are just plain stupid, Stuart. America well, is it, the most stupid people in the country. You know, I can't it's, – it's, I, it, I try not to rant. A little bit, but this is just so ignorant. You know, know. We've, got, we've got a government that will yield nothing to the American people. They'll let the American people know nothing. All of this stuff is still secret. All the old Benghazi stuff, the IRS has not been fixed at all. You know, I mean, you've got all this stuff swirling around in Washington, D.C., and I guess the only spoon that's causing the, the tornado in Washington is really Donald Trump. He's the only spoon stirring anything, actually. And I believe that uh, he was put there from on high, and that's the only reason he's still there. And they're moving in ever, an ever-increasing fashion to destroy him out of that office. And uh, people can believe that what seems- they want to. I've just It's beyond me. I guess you and I are from a dinosaur age that when we were a lot younger, Stuart, this country would have never put up with this. They would have never oh. put up with this. No, now, there would have been. Well, yeah, they won't ahead. even tweet about it. You know what I'm saying? America's yeah, so I, lazy I, it won't even talk about it. 
I don't know. I don't know what's happened, and I've noticed the same thing in the Christian circles. There's been a, a huge, huge change in their uh, giving. There's been a huge, huge change even in their interest in this stuff. It, yeah. It's just amazing to me, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, Paul, I, Stuart, I, you know, yeah, I've, I've told you, yeah, I've told you, Stuart, a number of times that I, I've been very concerned about the apparent lack of interest of people and in even what's going on. I mean, you remember when I told you I used to post a lot of earthquakes and I would yes. get comments even when there were a six. Now I can post an eight and I don't even get a word. I mean, it's like nobody cares anymore. Yeah, I think that, well, the Lord is behind this. He's the people that have followed him in truth are still alert, wide awake, et cetera, et cetera, but the vast majority of them are not. And if you actually go into a study of it, I mean, it's a huge, huge, huge number of Christians that are totally apostate. I mean, it's way up there in percentage. Paul Craig Roberts this is an interesting little article that he's written. You know, he's an, basically an insider. He was with the, uh, was it Bush or Reagan? I can't remember. Uh, there is no longer, he says, any doubt that the criminally insane government, which you were just talking about, <laughs> in Washington is driving the world to the last war. Update, as Americans, we must face the possibility that we have a criminally insane government in Washington that is leading the world to destruction. Yeah. And then he yeah. quotes a Russian government press release. Now, obviously, the, the Russians have a different take on things. False information is being planted about the alleged use of chlorine and other toxic agents by the Syrian government forces. The latest fake news about a chemical attack on Douma was reported yesterday. These reports are again referenced to the notorious white helmets, which have been proven more than once to be working hand in glove with the terrorists as well as other pseudo-humanitarian organizations headquartered in the UK and the US. We recently warned of the possibility of such dangerous provocations. The goal of these absolutely unsubstantiated lies is to protect the terrorist and the uh, radical opposition that has rejected a political settlement as well as to justify the use of force by external actors. We have to say once again, that military interference in Syria, where Russian forces have been deployed at the request of the legitimate government under contrived and false pretext, is absolutely unacceptable and can lead to very grave consequences. They have been invited there. We have not. Yeah. So, you're, you're, you know, the – yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that's very that's very truthful. Matter of fact, what Mattis said this evening when he was asked again about uh, why we haven't done anything, he said, we don't have all the information yet. We're still assessing the information. So that something has changed, Stuart. That's what I'm saying. Something has come to Trump, uh, either through John Bolton or, or some of his other people, that is contradicting what the deep state has given him. The picture the deep state has presented him is not accurate. And uh, as I said before, the reports now that the Russian army has moved into Duma, and they are there investigating, looking into that. And, and of course, uh, somebody's had a pause, it appears. Not that this won't go on. I don't know if Trump can hold back the deep state. They want this war too bad. And, uh, you know, for us out there that do pray, pray against them. Pray against that deep state activity. That Because yes. it is criminal. Stuart, when you look at our government, you look at the FBI right now, renegades. You look at the DOJ, renegades. You look at look at the CIA. You, I can just name one after the other group of our government that are renegades. They are criminals. And what does the American people do? Nothing. 
And, of course, that's yeah. my frustration. Nobody else has to carry that load. But I, I pray a lot, and it, <laughs> I, it, it, it worries me that the American people won't stand up. But I guess what we receive in the end will be justified. Yes, and we are going to receive it because Bible prophecy says we will receive it four times over what we have given the world. So double unto you, double Babylon and uh, Revelation 18. If people want to go read it, that's us. That's uh, all about the United States. And Jeremiah 50, 51, Isaiah 47, when you put it all together, it does not spell a pretty picture of who America really is on the inside, which you cannot see. On the outside, it looks fairly reasonable. But now it's beginning to surface the insanity of all this, and uh, the world is taking note. And this may be, you may be right, I think uh, Trump has received information, maybe direct from Putin himself, that uh, what what are you doing? So hopefully this will all cool down, and if it does, the deep state will do something else. And they will keep doing it until they get their war, because they need the war to blame on Trump to get rid of Trump. If they can't get rid of him any other way, they'll deep six him. You know, they'll, he'll take a dirt nap, well, probably along with his whole family. These people have absolutely no conscience whatsoever. They're just biological computers, and they've been programmed with an agenda, and that's all they have, and they don't care if everybody listening to my voice or all the American people were to die in the process, and if they can make it painful, they're even ha- happier about that. The, the, these are animals uh, that are walking around in, in suits, and they are the rich men of the earth, just like the Bible identifies them as. Uh, you'll find what happens, So in Deuteronomy chapter 28, we have inherited all those curses. Anyway, I guess we don't really know. We're coming up here on the end of our uh, broadcast for tonight, but uh, the inside sources say this probably will happen, and it'll probably be either tomorrow or the next day, unless Trump calls it off altogether, and uh, then, then we'll get another false flag. And it'll be horrendous. The next one will. And it will definitely blame, be blamed probably on Moscow so that we will go to war. I mean, this is how they operate. It's all lies. Remember, Jesus Christ warned you that the last days are nothing but filled with lies and deceptions. Final word there, Larry. Yeah, we'll, uh, just for the people... We'll continue. I've been blogging all day and posting, and I'll continue to do that through the next few days to where this, see where this goes. But we're also under a G1 magnetic, geomagnetic storm, and uh, people should know mm-hmm. that the electromagnetic is, is up right now. Yeah, they're saying something about the, uh, you might even see the aurora as far south as Wisconsin, Minnesota, the Dakotas, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, uh, the sun is very, very, um, Anomalous, I guess is the word, folks. And don't go out in the sun much if you can avoid it. And if you do have to go out into it, dress for it. Uh, the sun is changing. The cosmic rays that are coming out of it are changing. The uh, infrared is changing. Uh, the uh, it's, it's Everything is changing. We're in the final phase of uh, Earth history for this age anyway. Final word, Larry? Heads up, probably. Yeah, I, I was just going to say to everybody, we seem to be in this strange pause, but uh, Stuart said watch the next 24 to 36 hours, so that's what we need to do. Yeah, it's just too bad that we're being led into this stuff, but the American people, like you say, won't do anything. So what can you do? If they won't stop it, there's nothing you can do about it. And uh, it's just too bad because in this country we have the right to rise up. We have the right and the duty to rise up. Anyway, thanks a lot, folks. Take care of yourselves. Uh, Keep an eye out. The next probably 48 hours may tell a lot of what's really going on. Anyway, good night, and uh, we hope you'll be safe. In Jesus' name, amen, and uh, good night.